Welcome to the Healthy Living Revolution Live. My name is Gretchen Comstock, and I want to thank you for joining us. The Healthy Living Revolution is a movement of people who are taking their health back, and we are offering this series to bring simple solutions and simple education. For this episode, I'm excited to introduce Dr. Candace Corson, who will address the topic, Feeding the Good Guys, Plant Power and Your Inner Ecosystem. Dr. Corson received both her college degree and her medical degree from Yale University. She completed her residency in family medicine at the University of Rochester, New York. She and her husband, Dr. George Knowles, both served as non-commissioned officers in the United States Public Health Service through the National Health Service Corps in North Carolina. Dr. Corson later went into integrative medicine after studying nutritional therapy to help patients recover much better from chronic illness like asthma and autoimmune disorders. She is a national health educator on nutrition and health recovery and environmental illness. Dr. Corson lives with her husband, George, in Indiana, where they've raised four sons and are now grandparents of a growing family. She also has a black belt in American Thai Kwan Do. So Dr. Corson, I will turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Gretchen. It's so great to do this with you, my friend and colleague. And we're gonna talk about something that is emerging as one of the most important topics in the whole area of healing, in the area of prevention of disease and in recovery. And that is, we're now knowing that when we feed ourselves, whatever we get to or choose to feed ourselves, we're also feeding an entire ecosystem within us. So I love to start with this slide just because it's so beautiful and shows part of the elegance of life. We know that the colors, are li of, the colors of life and the colors of fresh produce are not only protectors of life, but they actually feed the organisms within us as well as the own, our cells of our own body. So these are just some things that we know correlate in a bigger way than we ever thought with the state of our health as a family, as a community, as a nation, and as a world. And I love this, uh, this magazine cover, The Sorry State of Our Health and How Not to End Up Here. And it is all about prevention. So we're gonna talk about something that in some ways it deserves a little humor because there has been a lot of confusion about what's good to eat, what's not good to eat. And I love this little joke, it seems to make everyone laugh. The Japanese eat very little fat, have less heart disease than Brits or Americans. Japanese drink very little wine, seem to have less heart disease than the British or Americans. The French drink excessive red wine, have less heart disease. And here's a very scientific conclusion, eat and drink whatever you want because apparently speaking English is what kills you. That's the state of confusion that we have today, but a lot is known for sure. We're gonna talk about the emerging science on getting well and staying well. These are just some magazine covers that really show we have a challenge on our hands. The little girl in the top uh, the large photo time is only 11 years old, but already has what we used to call adult onset diabetes, which we now call type two diabetes. And we know that so much of our chronic illness, illnesses today actually start in childhood and go on to uh, chronic disease in adulthood. And there's a lot of good news around this because we have a way that science has shown to make this better. And I love this, this graphic showing that our DNA, our blueprint, is not our absolute destiny. There is now so much knowledge that what we do in terms of switching on good genes and switching off problematic genes, which has greatly to do with nutrition, is one of the most important things of all. We call that field epigenetics. And it's not only epigenetics of what happens to our genes, but what happens to the germs that live within us, particularly in our intestinal system. And we call that our microbiota, all those little small germs, so many thousands of species, but we can also call the whole thing the microbiome, looking at their genetic pattern. And we know that plant-based nutrition is very important, more than we ever knew before in terms of science. It protects our health, the science is clear, and it also protects and feeds the good germs within us. And I think that Hippocrates, 
who many call the father of Western medicine, had it right, we know he had it right when he said, let food be your medicine, but now modern science is showing in detail more about why that is so important. So one of the basic things that a lot of people are learning now is that our immune system largely resides by volume and mass in the intestinal lining, some 70% of our immune system. And it is, if you will, you can call it the thermostat or the chief regulator of immune function throughout our entire body and brain. And what we feed our, our, our immune system is what we feed our gut, our intestine. It really matters so much more than we used to know. And so many of us, our grandmothers or grandparents, encouraged us to eat our colors, eat a wide rainbow spectrum of plant foods. And now we're learning not only are these foods anti-inflammatory and anti-cancer, but they're working in large measure through supporting the healthy germs uh, instead of problematic germs in our intestine. So our immunity is really our lifeline. As we shared, 70% resides in our gut. And this is just a schematic. It's a very simplified one, but just showing some of the complexity. So what is the microbiome? It's really a term that has been given to looking at the big picture of who is living in us and realizing that there are enormous numbers and balance involved in a healthy person. Basically, we can say there are at least 10 times as many of these good little germs in a healthy person living inside us as they are, there are actually are human cells in our body. So there are many more of them. Of course, they're much tinier. But the only way we've really been able to study them well is in recent years because they are tracked by their DNA pattern. Most of them are too delicate to grow in a laboratory. They only grow in the delicate, special environment of the human being or whatever animal is also having hosting these. And it's, these, these little good germs are actually doing things for us that we can't do for ourselves. They make anti-cancer substances every day. They make vitamins for us. They help our digestion or they actually perform much of our digestion and they keep the barrier healthy and strong so that we don't have uh, harmful things leaking into our bloodstream that shouldn't be there. This is just several different schematics and just to show some complexity, but all of this is really just scratching the surface. And I like to say that life is elegant. We realize that the elegance is uh, really profound. Yeah, I wanna talk about, we've often heard, I'm gonna advance to this one, we've heard about probiotics. Um, so we can go back and just define some terms that we do to help understand this whole field. Antibiotics are those drugs that we use to kill germs with an infection happening for a person to buy that person enough time and bring the population of those infection causing germs down enough that then their immune system can take over and finish that problem. So the term probiotic was developed in recent years as an idea for the good germs. And then the term prebiotic is really important, maybe end ending up being one of the most important answers to our health, um, both in, in our wellness, keeping us well and resilient from disease, and in our recovery, even from very serious acute and chronic illness. Prebiotic, P-R-E, refers to the foundational food that must be present to feed the populations of the important good germs. So we'll go back to, this is another term that is pretty amazing to many of us called psychobiotics. Again, these are terms that are made up to try to describe and understand uh, what we're dealing with. This is a wonderful article, how gut bacteria mess with your mind. I prefer to think of it how having the good populations, and we know there are hundreds and hundreds, um, thousands of good species who work together synergistically um, and there are some noxious species that often can take over when the good germs have been, have been harmed, such as by antibiotics and other things that decrease their populations. But the good news is that by feeding the good germs, we now know that they manufacture for us 
brain transmitters, neurotransmitters, and they make way more of those for us than our brain is able to make. And that's how it's supposed to be. So I used to have years ago, I would have occasionally very insightful patients tell me they didn't feel well, they actually lost their mental health uh, resilience and their feeling of emotional stability after being on antibiotics. That's something they noticed. I was not taught about that. So I I didn't dismiss completely what they were saying. I stored it in the back of my mind, but I didn't know a biological mechanism where that could be, uh, by, by where that could happen. And now we know that they were right on target. So the good news is that in the field of psychiatry, it's now being found that having a healthy uh, population of the microbiota, those many important species working together in balance and synergistically, um, is very important, and we can actually help people restore uh, not only bodily health, but actually uh, mental health as well um, in a much better way. So I'm not saying this would be instead of medication or therapy, but it's an important part that we can't fix just with talk therapy or medication. We have to address the good germs and feeding the good germs. So I like to share this wonderful picture that many people love. It's some 250 natural components, molecules, compounds that are within a clean apple. This is not chemicals on the apple. This is nature's food uh, in its breakdown if we try to analyze what's in there. But there are really uh, some 10,000 or more um, food molecules in an apple. And each kind of plant food in the edible plant kingdom has a different spectrum of thousands upon thousands of what we call phytonutrients, P-H-Y-T-O meaning plant in Greek. So phytonutrients, plant nutrients, phytochemicals, these are the things that we are supposed to be made out of from preconception through a pregnancy, through all stages of life, but they also are there to protect our body from degradation, to allow repair, and they're there, now we know, this is the big topic today, to feed the good germs. This is what they eat, is plants. And that becomes the prebiotic foundation. These are the conditions that we now know, and this is just a partial list that I started writing, uh, associated with whole food deficit. We know we don't have so much a vitamin deficit, which is 13 things that we call vitamins. We have an entire whole food deficit. It's all the things, vitamins, phytochemicals that make everything work properly together. And you see that list starting with our tremendous problems with brain function today, Alzheimer's disease, altered immune function in terms of an epidemic of allergies, an epidemic of asthma, and a true epidemic of autoimmune disorders that we did not see to this extent whatsoever when I was in my medical training some 40, 45 years ago. Cancer, many people put into the category of degenerative disease. Um, it's a very complex thing. We're learning more every day. But having the bad body out of balance and dealing with imbalances is not a favorable environment for fighting off um, mutated cells. And you see that, again, the list of uh, brain disorders, depression, cognitive disorders, learning disorders, behavior disorders, inflammation, and having things out of balance in our gut, we now know, is very much associated with that. And just to give an idea on the connection here, there are a couple of intriguing studies, one from the United States, one from Canada, showing that the first course of antibiotics, usually about a week, maybe seven to 10 days, given under the age of one year old in a child, actually causes a doubling of asthma. It doubles the lifetime risk of asthma. It's a great reason not to overuse or use antibiotics when they're not really necessary. And sometimes that's a hard judgment call. It's for an experienced physician and parent to figure that out together. But it's a wonderful reason not to use antibiotics um, just as if they were uh, totally had, had no negative consequences. There's a recent article that was published showing a very significant correlation between the use of antibiotics in childhood and later autoimmune disorders. So what we wanna do is be learning more about the microbiome and the microbiota and learning how to feed them the right things because they actually then do a lot of things for us 
without us having to do much else besides take good care of them, they actually take good care of us. And just to finish up this list, other things associated with inflammation, heart disease, diabetes, and then one of my very dear to my heart, uh, dealing with infections, prevention of infections or helping people fight infections. And the list goes on. So I love this new, newer way of looking at a sort of guidelines for our healthy eating. We now know that instead of the old fashioned food pyramid, that it has now been replaced uh, for US dietary guidelines, at least half the plate for each meal to be fresh fruits and vegetables, fresh produce. And that is in large measure because they are feeding the good germs. That is what they require to eat. For people who like to read or listen to audios, this is a wonderful book, relatively new, The Good Gut, written by two PhDs, um, Justin and Erica Sonnenberg. And one of the things I love about this book is it's actually sharing that instead of a total wipeout of our good germs, which we often have thought occurs with antibiotic usage, in many cases, there are still a few tiny populations trying to survive in our gut. They cannot thrive. They cannot grow into the trillions that they need to be to do the work for us, but they're waiting for food. And I love that because it means instead of thinking we're going to replace it all, which we simply can't, that whole range of good germs, by a probiotic pill, there's a time and place for it, but we can't culture the vast majority of these good germs. Therefore, you can't possibly put them into a probiotic. It simply can't be done when we lose a huge swath of these important, uh, the spectrum of good germs, um, they're not gonna come back by something we can grow in the lab only. But the beautiful news is we're focusing now more on prebiotic function, which is the foundational food for the good germs. If they are hiding and waiting for good food to come along in our intestine and we feed them those various populations of a whole spectrum of plant foods because the different populations require different kinds of plant fibers um, that are left over after our human digestion. If we can feed those good germs, they will come back. And that is uh, where a lot of um, good things have happened for people's health that I have witnessed personally. Uh, for people who like to read, Marvelous Book is the second uh, famous book by Dr. T. Colin Campbell. And this is the book called Whole, Rethinking the Science of Nutrition. It's really looking at the holistic picture of how our bodies are made, how plants are made, and how the interaction there is uh, one from time immemorial. Very elegant, very complex, really beyond all of our detailed understanding. But um, the answers are there. Our body knows how to use the complexity and the elegance of whole plant foods. And then this book I totally recommend for not only healthcare professionals, but for parents, Answers for the 4A Epidemic by wonderful pediatrician, Dr. Joseph Canizero. And it's answers for helping kids with autism, attention deficit or attention deficit with hyperactivity disorder, asthma, allergies. On the surface, many people may think that these disorders have nothing whatsoever to do with each other, but in fact, they all have an origin in the things we're talking about today. In our lives, we were not paying attention to any other way other than eating as healthfully as we could do in our family of four little boys, but as they got older and became teenagers, um, our life really shifted in terms of where we were placing our our focus because vending machines came to our children's schools and that food was a food stream in their lives all day, five days a week. It made a really big difference and it made that difference right away. Within the first week, our kids stopped eating foods from plants. No apples, no carrots, no celery, no salads, nothing because their metabolic programming had changed and simply we can say it, their tastes changed. And within four months, they both had repeated respiratory infections, repeated courses of antibiotics. And then when my 15 year old developed asthma, which is the reason in cl clinically for patients that I had started studying nutrition 20 years before, when my son developed asthma, I was so humbled that when the third person asked if I was open to seeing clinical, independent university peer reviewed research on a nutrition product made from whole foods, whole plants, would I be open to seeing that? I said, yes, I'd be very open to seeing that. Um, as a medical doctor, I wanted to see it. 
but also had a feel for that because both my mom and dad were uh, biologists and were uh, medical researchers. And what came into our lives at that point was Juice Plus, which I had been totally ignoring for eight years. Um, not cynically, but just not seeing how could there be value there. And when I found out that there was good independent university research published in very good journals, peer reviewed by scientists in other universities not involved with that research, I really loved that. And when I found out it could be free, uh, and it, it is free for children in a family, I decided to start my child who had now developed asthma on this product. And the only way he would use it is if I used it. I didn't think I needed it. But I did that knowing it was safe, knowing it was something that was pure food that the body could use, the body recognized and knew what to do with, knowing that good peer-reviewed research so good things happen, not to the body, but for the body. This is food that does things for the body. I decided I would do this for him. And his um, success with this was amazing. He had a very good response to having better health, better immune function, better resilience. And um, even though he thought it was a coincidence and tried all summer without it and had the same thing happen again, he eventually saw that his life was much stronger using this. And with the education that comes all around this, he learned a great deal. And today, some over 15 years later, he has not needed an inhaler all these years and he is um, a physician himself and knows how to take really good care of himself and his family, starting with the nutritional base of good food, heavily loaded towards healthy plants. But the body of research is really what has made the difference for so many of us who are trained in science, over 20 years of really good, independent, peer-reviewed, published research. And I'm just going to go very briefly here because anyone who's interested in more can ask the person who shared this whole idea with you and they can actually get those papers for you online. Supporting immune health, there are multiple studies, better immune balance, better resilience. I love that the inflammatory response in the human body, all of this is in human beings, this is all the research, now 36 published studies, systemic inflammation is reduced and also we know that in children who are already developing insulin resistance which is that first big step towards adult onset diabetes or type 2 that there is a very significant difference peer-reviewed research double-blind placebo controlled at the Nemours Children's Research Foundation and showing these children stepping away from uh, their abdominal fat mass accumulating, they're over six months of using the orchard and garden blend in a capsule form or opening the capsule. These children had less abdominal fat mass and reduced insulin resistance. This is so significant. It was decided by the Journal of Pediatrics to publish this research. And finishing up here, there's so much more to see, but I love that an independent systemic review of the literature was done by the University of Toronto. And they were asking the question, are there any good scientific papers showing true health benefits of eating supplements made of whole vegetables and fruits? They found 22 papers worldwide. Two of those papers were on a specific way to help HIV AIDS patients nutritionally. The other 20 papers were all about Juice Plus, and that is what they found looking uh, through the literature at the University of Toronto. So what I want to just say is we know that we increase our inflammatory burden when we take out inadvertently our good populations of germs. The good germs eat plant foods, our, our, we know that our body's chemistry is based ultimately from plant chemistry. Whether we eat animals or not, the, the animals had to eat plant chemistry. So our building blocks do come through the plant kingdom. And what we know now to be so true is that the building blocks for the good kinds of germs that we need in the trillions of numbers, in the hundreds and hundreds of cooperating elegant species to make everything work properly in our body, particularly our inflammatory balance to be normal, 
that those foods that those good germs need are plant foods. And eating those plant foods is simply good for us. And that is good news when you have something simple and safe made by nature in its elegance and complexity, cost effective, free for children. I absolutely love that for years at a time and shown to do good things for the human body, looking at every level that's been looked at of uh, different organ systems, different systems like immune system, cardiovascular system, DNA repair, tissue repair. I think when we have something like that, it's really good news and that's why I love to share it because I think people want the best for themselves and their families. They want the best for their children. And this is something that we can share with a huge heart knowing that good things are going to happen. So I wanna share back to you, Gretchen. Thank you so much for hosting this call. Thank you, Dr. Candice Corson, so much for this and for everyone to, who joined us today. And as Dr. Candice said, please get with the person who invited you. We encourage you to uh, learn more. Uh, this was very helpful. And um, everybody have a great day. Thanks everyone.